The next bit of work for this particular nuclear facility is important but small. We need uh, 36 heat sinks per minute. So <clears throat> not on the grand scale of the iron area or anything, um, just one little thing. In fact, I didn't bother doing much else. I just came down here and went bloop, bloop, bloop. So we have two assemblers making heat sinks. I'm using the heat exchanger because it's using stuff that I have on hand. Uh, surprise, surprise, I planned all this out, so everything I do is using stuff that's on hand. So I need aluminum casing and rubber. Got two machines doing that, and then we go down below, and here's the assembler making all the aluminum casings I need. And it needs some aluminum ingots, so we do aluminum ingots. <clears throat> and I started putting those together, and the inputs are, are nicely laid out. And then I had to chase down in my factory where all this crap came from. Um, copper, for instance, I thought that these two copper lines I thought were going to be consuming all the rest of my copper in, in that uh, area down here. So the, the Katerium was going to consume all the copper. Well, it turns out that it's all the copper except we have a small bit of copper that goes down into here. Silica, similarly, I thought all the silica was going to the uh, nuclear fuel facilities where we have two instances of we need 360 a minute. And it turns out that we also need some silica here. This needs like 180 or something. And the rubber. So uh, I chased all those down and I followed my rule of using the lower deck, uh, the, the deck level for the north south and the raised level for east west. Uh, grabbing the copper was easy. I just took where we were going for the transition to go east and put a splitter in on each one and then merge them. So we now have this belt, which will tend to draw evenly from these two. And that gets me my copper. The silicon previously was just going straight out. So what I had to do was work out how I was going to split some silica off from those two and then merge it together. It turned out the easiest way was to do the same thing I did with the copper, send two lines north, and then I realized I'm gonna need to have all the lines going north because that's where we're going to use them eventually. So we, we have the empty belts set up. And then here is where we pick up one belt worth of silica and I'm bringing it back over so that it is here and convenient to use. That gets us our four inputs. And the only output from here are heat sinks, which head up this direction. Oops, and here I have diverted the heat sinks out to a sink so they go away, but I am noting that I will need to reserve this space four heat sinks going onward to further work. Uh, I should have been reserving spaces like that all along. I wasn't, so we may have some challenges. Fortunately, as long as I have kept strictly to my two layer belt topology, I should be able to pick up materials from wherever they are and just send them east. As long as there's not something else on that lane, we're good. I could also decide that belt work going outside this area. So this is actually a distinct section of the facility. It's the, it's all of the stuff I need to put together up to, but not including the first time where uranium has to come in. So I delayed pulling uranium as long as possible. Once I turn that on, uh, it becomes harder to test. I have to drop a save, turn on the uranium, see how things are going, and then I have to roll it back because there's reactivity. Now, even with the, the God mode setup, you know, with the God mode setup, there's no real problem, but it, my, uh, my radioactivity meter goes chatter, 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 and I, I prefer not to have that happen. I have such a preference for it that I would rather put up with rolling back when I find a problem to fix it. 
So there's the heat sinks and all of the aluminum work we did culminates in that. And if we head back along this line, we get back to here, which is where we actually prepared the aluminum. And at some point, this is going to show that it is, well, I guess um, the lines are full, but it looks like we are draining this and refilling it and keeping it happy. So it looks like we are in balance on all the aluminum stuff. Yay! So for this section, that was DD2K. The only remaining thing we need to do before we get into doing radioactive things uh, is crystal oscillators and crystal beacons, and I will be using manufacturers for that. We need a total of seven manufacturers making oscillators and two making beacons. And I may round that up so we get eight running crystal oscillators. Um, the manufacturers are really big. I don't think I can put two manufacturers in a blueprint. Let's see. I did rough out the, the aluminum in a blueprint over here. So if I put a manufacturer up. You see how big that is. Um, thank you, autosave. So if I center that and put it all the way back, it is possible that I could stack them vertically. In fact, let's try that, because that might actually be a good idea. I mean, mostly just for practice at this point. I don't know how high it would have to be. And let's use glass here. Oh, come on. So we are zooping. So the question is, can we stack two of these vertically? We do have this sticking up. I don't know how complicated the bounding box is. If it's just a, oh, I can't put it directly over, can I? That totally works. One wonders if I could put it lower, but I think that's as low as I want to go. So that would be nice if I could um, bring materials down and split them between the two. And I think I can do that by putting a splitter up above. Or heck, I could put a splitter on that level. So, the idea would be to put those two and then have a, the actual input come down on one side or the other. So first off, can I clip into there? Uh, I think that might be too tight in. Yeah. 
Too tight. Okay, so that connects. So I could do that kind of a geometry. I'm intending to turn the glass, either, either you turn the glass into a frame or get rid of it entirely. Um, where does that put my splitter? Oh, the splitters are going to be tight. Uh, okay. These will have to drop down, I guess, like that. do that. Uh, it's going to be tricky to get all of the lifts set up, but that looks like a decent geometry. Um, what I'd like to do is set up that geometry, but have the top holes in the normal place. So let's swoop this up here. So the top holes are going Boom, boom, three, four. So the next question is, if I put that hole there, does this fit? And I think it does because I think it's one meter out here. These splitters go just like that. to him.
it's easier to put those in place when the glass isn't there and I can easily enough zip it out to put the other one in. Okay, so these splitters are all hooked up. They have their lifters going out to the holes and now I can place the <coughs> manufacturer in place. I hope it fits. So I'm going to ease it into position. This gives me some clearance in the back. I think because I've now, I want them to be aligned and I want it to be close enough that I don't have to put belts into the other one. So pretty much this is where it has to end up. Or one closer, I guess. I'm going to try to put it as close as possible and see if I have to back it off rather than so yeah I can't reach the hole from there so this is going to be my best location need to clip it into the back one There we go. And we're going to do something similar with the results coming up. Let's get that started. So we're on the correct line here. Oops. Come on, three. I think that will clip in. If so, so if that's one and that's the other, uh, no, I'm not going to be able to put the splitter in place there. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Actually, this needs to be a merger, and we're going to merge it out to the left. Okay, so I could nestle it in. That's not a problem. I am going to try to set that up, see if that works. That's a lot more compact than I thought we were going to be able to get. It doesn't look bad either. Let's see if it works. Well, I'm hearing the tick and I'm seeing the arrow in the right place, so. But I'm also seeing this come out. So it may be a good idea to pull my, my merger toward me by one.
So that, light, that nozzle is only long when it's connecting into something. But yeah, I'm going to pull it out one further. So merging to the right, but not quite as aggressively as before. So that was super aggressive. Put it like that. Still coming out the bottom. What? There we go. Now, because I'm not aggressively putting this all the way in for this guy, I may have a bit of a stretch on this one. So needs to be same line flush there and now we nestle the other one back down under here Align that way, and that's aligned that way. Oh, good. So that does reach. I was worried. Now power usually comes in right there. <laughs> so instead what we're going to do is try to pick it up down here. Really, the top one should go into the top nub, so let's pull that. You pull out to here, and you go up, and you connect to there. <clears throat> so now if we program these machines and I have inputs coming down here, we'll have a single output coming up over here somewhere. direction did I face this? I'm not putting this back in place again. Let's just go with it where it is. Oh, wait a minute, I could take the belt from here and run it around and over to my preferred spot. <clears throat> which is here. I thought so. We are almost, almost one further in, and this would have been a nice angle. So I'm going to move the hole for this one over by one, which is actually a nicer place, but it's not where many of the others went. 
And that gets me a nice curve around to my output there. And now we can clean up a lot of the glass. So there's two manufacturers, and later on when we start building different parts of the factory, it may be convenient to have this space on the side to put in, you know, like a, maybe we'll need a, a foundry or a constructor or, or an assembler to, who knows. But this is positioned by where I wanted my inputs and the fact that I wanted things to be nice and tight. <clears throat> I suppose I could put a floor with a with a uh, a grid out here, so it'd be like the rest of them. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so this guy is going to go vertical until I get to the right level for this, which is here, I think. No, one above that. Thank you, autosave. I'm not going to be able to find my place again. This one? Yeah, this one. This line that gets turned into a frame. And guess what? Oh, no, this guy is the one that's got the, the proper alignment. So let's go vertical again. Let's put in half width on this one, <clears throat> just like that. Now this is called two manufacturer. So we are going to need eight manufacturers making crystal oscillators at, uh, let's see, it's uh, two, two, 6.286 times seven divided by eight is 198, so, so 200%. They are building crystal oscillator.
<clears throat> okay, we need eight of those, and I'll have to work out how to get my inputs in. It'll probably be a matter of bringing the inputs up in this area over here on the north, and then taking the four I need across on the, on the top of it, and then picking up the four kind of with this kind of a layout. In fact, I could probably use this blueprint for my cap. So let's set up a cap. Okay, so the height of the cap is as far as you can go, take away two, like that. I'm going to make it match, even though this will normally get deleted. Uh, actually, let's put those guys in place. So I need eight of these. Oh, no, I need four of these <clears throat> because I've got two oscillators in each one. And I can just put them right here. And I'm getting more confident as I build this thing. I, I normally would have placed it once and routed all the inputs and then worried about whether they were gonna get there or not and tested them out with one and then placed the rest. I'm just gonna go the whole thing. Now the top part is not that guy. It is that guy. I'm gonna place one and check and make sure that this is still aligned. And it is. A lot of this is going to get deleted, but it's mostly right. So for example, in this case, I'm not going to have all these belts returning things to the north. I'm just going to have the one output, <clears throat> which is this guy, which is going to return out on that line. I'll leave the rest of the lines here until I've checked to make sure things work. But we're pretty sure that our inputs work, so I'll just connect. Well, actually, if I get rid of these, it'll be a little easier to, a little bit easier to connect things up. Now in this case, these crystal oscillators, some of them are going to be going to two more manufacturers that are going to be making crystal beacons. And I can put that right here. And that is literally the same blueprint with the recipe changed. So I'm gonna place that down. Oh, except it has different inputs. So I am going to need to put that here. Let's put that afterwards. Almost made it impossible to route the inputs to this thing. That would have been bad. So for here, what do I need? I need, oh, let's just do it manually. In order, it felt so weird, Zoop was off.
So it doesn't matter what order the inputs are in because they're all going to manufacturer. So I just have to identify the four belts and then I'll just bring them down in whatever order is convenient. So my inputs for oscillator are quartz crystal and cable, reinforced iron plate, and crystal oscillator. Whoops. I've only got three inputs, <laughs> which means that this goes away. There'll be a lot of things that get deleted on this. But if I delete that now, I will remember to not hook it up. So quartz crystal cable and reinforced iron plate. Hum -tum. So with all of this stuff here, it means that I my traversal is going to be a little weird. So here's the quartz crystal. Uh, <clears throat> I need to find cable and reinforced iron plate. There's cable here. Okay, cable. And then there's going to be reinforced iron plate here. So I'll bring the plate up first, and it'll go in this area here. Uh, let me see if there's any place else that needs reinforced iron plate. Nope, just the quartz outpost. Which means that I can indeed simply take this entire line and turn it east like that. That's along this seam, so we, I'm going to run these lines out as I set them up because that's the best check to make sure that I didn't you know, double book a lane. And <clears throat> I can actually even route them all the way into my build. We'll check we're getting reinforced iron plate here. We are. And that's going to be going in on this lower line here. And eventually that will fill up and send them downstream. At some point that will have filled all of them up. Well, it'll do that very quickly because they don't have power yet. How about I set up the power so they can actually, oh, I need to drop things down. Let's set up the vertical connections now. Should have done this before I started worrying about the inputs. Okay, now these bits and bobs go away. And 
that means that this line is now going to be properly connected up as our main output. I'm going to run it all the way over here until we figure out what to do with it. Uh, yeah, that was the, <clears throat> the nub that goes down on this guy in the top and that plate there. I really need to be more careful about my deletes, I don't need to delete those plates quite yet. But I'd like to get these out of the way in case, you know, just so I don't accidentally hook them up. And we have a little bit of stuff left over here. Okay, so that was the iron, reinforced iron plates. This is reserved for heat sinks. So cable and quartz crystal come next. And unfortunately, these two columns here are in use. So I have to come out to here. I've got cable. I guess cable's the next one. That means the quartz should be down here, check. So let's bring up the cable. And now I'm going to need some supports. So this is actually the way my factories usually go, is that I'll be focused on building blueprints that are fairly compact and tricky. And once I get them going, then I find out that the task of belting things around is at least as big. Now, blueprints are still helping quite a lot. There is something restful, though, about just running belts across the, the, uh, the factory, knowing what I'm doing, and having a plan, and just kind of... I guess it's the same feeling that some people get out of, you know, like gardening... The phrase from my childhood is, everybody needs a hobby. Okay, so this should have my cable, which I am going to put on this line. Now, I went through and I hooked up the outputs. I didn't hook up the inputs or the power. So I'm going to call that another squirrel moment. So one, two, three, that's right, count again. One, two, three, 
that kind of skip stuttered there at the end. That's correct. So I just noticed if I leave the plates in, in, in place, it makes it easier to figure out where I'm sending the power because it's right off the plate like that. Okay. So I see yellow lights on all my manufacturers above, and I see yellow lights on the manufacturers below. So let's get our inputs going. I like to hook them up from bottom to top. So if I see this flowing, I know they're properly connected on both ends. If I did top to bottom, then the bottom end might be connected to the wrong thing and it would still flow. That has happened. So we have two inputs done. <clears throat> Thank you, autosave. So one of these inputs will remain empty. I'm just not really sure which one. It might be the third one. Because of the way that I interleaved the north-south belts into the east-west. Still, you never know. Someday I may clear this out and provide different inputs to the manufacturers to make something else. Unlikely, however, because we are swinging into um, making our final delivery. And now I can take all these out. So we have a nice flat bottom. And we can see our power running. We can see our inputs. And we can see I haven't put inputs here. So we got some. I'm guessing we're just make, waiting for more to be made. Uh, hello, reinforced iron plates. Oh, you aren't supposed to be that slow, are you? I'm going to make sure I didn't do something stupid like forget to overclock my reinforced iron plates.
Oh, they're clocked down. So it's 10 per minute by four, so 40 per minute. So these really are coming slow. Which means that it's gonna take a while at 40 per minute to fill up the, <clears throat> the first guy and then fill up the second guy and so on. <clears throat> This is one reason why you'd want to use splitters and evenly distribute rather than use the, um, the manifold system I've got going because it would get them all going a lot sooner. But it's really just a matter of waiting. Okay, so I've got the cable and now I need the quartz crystal which can come right down this center line of this foundation. Checking the line on it. Yep, that works. So we put that that direction and we bring it up and out that way. That should make our turn. And now we need to put in supports. That was a splitter I put down so I could just middle click on it to pick up a splitter. Um, to turn off my flashlight, we're getting some sunlight. One last check as I put the supports in. Okay, we have a clear run. Okay, that is indeed quartz crystal. With it flashing by like that, sometimes quartz crystal looks like raw quartz. I get a little nervous. And at some point, we should start getting output, which will stack up here. So while that is moving, I'm going to delete a lot of these belt poles that we don't need. and clean. So what I'm doing here is I'm just tapping the control button as I'm hovering over the thing I want to delete. And as you hold it down, it'll give you how many you've tagged.
And of course, any, anything you pointed at will also be marked for dismantle if you're not careful. So there we go. And I think I'm going to leave that the way it is. Uh, how did I do it over here? Okay, I, I left the... Okay, so let's trim. Okay, so we are starting to get crystal oscillators. <clears throat> Not really ready to do any performance checks yet, but we're getting close. So we're still at the stage of filling things up with crystal. But let's take a look at the first few machines. Okay, so he's running and he's running. That's on, that's on. These guys are showing 100 because once they start, they're staying going. <clears throat> I think it doesn't average out all the dead time before that. So now we just have to wait for these guys to start getting some crystal. There we go, little dribs. So. <clears throat> I think my next task before I dive into the nuclear area is going to be getting all of the outputs of this whole facility here and having them all appear kind of along this edge in some order that makes some sense. And that's probably not something I need to do while I'm recording. So with that in mind, and with our oscillators running, and with high confidence that if we just wait a lot of minutes, we will eventually be filled up over here and be able to start our next ones going. See, that guy's already saturated, and so is that guy. So anything beyond 
what they need currently to run will go down. Now it's also possible that at 200%, perhaps these guys will be eating up enough that these two will not run at 100%. And we won't know that until we actually have run our crystal oscillators to where they need to go. But I'm confident that things look good. Uh, I am not gonna sync this. My next task is to route all of the outputs of this facility out this eastern edge and to remove all the temporary sinks. And when we come back, I will have that all buttoned up. I may put a new set of sinks kind of off over here in this corner to represent stuff that we aren't uh, consuming yet. Um, there is the possibility that I will be able to take this space here and run the rest of the nuclear facility out in this direction. What I was hoping to do was to place the nuclear power plants themselves at this upper deck level and kind of have this five by six area out here. So five reactors by six reactors. And then below, you know, so the reactors would be sitting on top of the upper deck and all the belting would go down below. And then off this direction would be um, handling the nuclear waste. So we have the, the uh, nuclear rods, the fuel rods coming in from this direction. We've got the power plant and we've got the waste. I'm not sure how big those are. Maybe those are fairly small relatively because the other power plant isn't too large. The reason why this is large is because uh, the other power plant was reaching out and grabbing final materials instead of grabbing raw materials. So this represents all the factories on the other side of the world that actually were being used to make power doubled up. So we'll see how that works. I'll see you when I've got that arranged.